beauties happy mother's day to all the mothers in the house i thought to film this video today because it's such a special day you guys let's get some makeup done while we talk we have a lot of things to talk about today. i think i'm gonna start with my face because yeah normally i always do my eyes and then my skin but a lot of you always say oh my girl we are so in love with the way you do your base so maybe i can start with my base and i don't want to do like something too much today although you guys already know the deal like sometimes you don't want to do too much and you end up just beating your face i remember when i was young you know i'm not young i'm still young i remember when i was i was still like a teenager i used to think about like what my kids are going to look like you know when i get married and things like that so mother's day is such a special day for us women because of course i know a lot of people don't also want to get married some women you know they don't want to be bothered with kids but may i be, let me say i believe majority of women you know we all want to be mothers we all want to carry our, our offspring and if you don't know i already have my two beautiful girls angela and angelique i have twin girls and yeah this is the month where america celebrate mothers and i'm so thankful for my kids i'm so blessed because i know twins it's not something that comes by so easily and it was all natural for us you know i never in my life thought that i would have twins so when god blessed us with one it wasn't easy at first but then as time goes on when but but then as time went on i wanted to go say goes on like you guys is oh, okay Please, did you eat already? Yeah, I ate really well. As time went on, I just started becoming more and more, you know, used to them. It wasn't easy at first, like I said, you guys, because I had them here in America. It's only me and my husband. I had the twins when I was barely 24, you guys, and they're at seven right now. So you can imagine how long it's almost 10 years, you guys. Because of the fact that I had twins as my first issue, you guys, it was more like i kind of became scared of having kids i don't know the reason first of all i had twins as my first kids and then i had cesarean it wasn't easy and also my mom then back then she she hasn't gotten her us visa so she wasn't able to come for mobile so literally everything i did everything my like i am my husband of course he was working so when he leaves for work i will be the one stuck at home with the kids so the thing just made me get scared of course my in-laws they were also of help but everybody was working and then my mom-in-law she used to always you know she worked then so she worked from um, monday to friday and then it was only the weekends she could help me out with the kids so it was just a lot of work for me and i don't know if that was the reason i just kind of it's not like i don't i, don't, I wouldn't say shut down but after the twins i was like mm -mm, this is you know this is not an easy job at all so although before we even started having kids with we said that we're gonna give our kids three years apart two or three years apart so I used to see that if we gave it if not because of the fact that we had twins right if we gave them three years apart it will still be six years so we decided we said okay maybe we just we're just gonna leave it like start trying once the twins clock six you know we always said we wanted three kids the twins turned, turned six last year and then after they turned six we knew it was time to start trying and then um, yeah like i said i just wanted to talk to a lot of women because my story might help one or two people watching me here the last day was 2019 okay we were like maybe we start trying ending or end of 2018 right and then um, we didn't get to we didn't start trying i was still kind of scared i was like i don't know if with my career and everything going on if i'm actually in the right space to start thinking about another baby but then at the end of the day the more you wait the older you get so i was like let me just do it and get it over with you know so 2019 i was like at least 2019 january we can start trying so that by 2019 by the grace of god if i'm able to you know get pregnant 2019 january at least by september i will have my baby at least like i i said let me just dedicate 2019 to just having a child and raising you know 
and raising the child, something like that, at least the first two, three months, you know? For me, I calculated everything. So of course, January came, we started trying. For me, person, like for me, when I got married, right, you guys, I, I got married March. I know I got married February. I, I had my white wedding February 12th. As at April, I was already pregnant. So although the twins wasn't planned, it just happened. But fact is, it wasn't a problem, you know, for us. It was very, very easy for us to get pregnant. Like I said, we didn't plan it. But when it happened, it was still, you know, it was a blessing. So for me personally, I thought it was going to be the same thing with the next baby with the next child so i was like okay if we try january if you know it kicks in january at least i have january february march april may june july august september october at least by october i will have the baby and then i will use the rest of the year to at least nurse the baby and like i wanted to, to dedicate 2019 as my <laughs> my year to have a, another baby you know that was my plan that was our plan so <laughs> surprisingly first month you guys we tried nothing i was like okay well, it's still you know the first month second month february came tried nothing and the worst is because of the fact that you're trying right after your ovulation you start feeling like oh you're pregnant something like that you just start getting all, all those pregnancy symptoms and you always think oh you're pregnant and the worst part of it all is when you go and check like get a pregnancy test and try it out as in check yourself and you discover you're not pregnant like the disappointment and it wasn't just a, an easy road January, February, March came, nothing April, nothing by then I was already like getting really really concerned I was already getting impatient I'm like what's going on like we didn't even try like this for you know the twins it wasn't we didn't even try at all i feel like it's more easier right where you're not planning and you just find out you're pregnant it's so much easier unlike when you know like when you intentionally go for it you guys like when i mean tension but for my hobby he was so relaxed it was like babe like what are you worrying for you know how many people that like you know go through this for like maybe months or years like you already have we already have um you know our kids like you should relax and then my mom will always be like you don't want to stress yourself you just want to relax but let me tell you if you've gone through that you know there is nothing like relaxing you always try to research google didn't even make it easy at all google would always tell you crazy things you would always imagine crazy things you know so so and then I read that you, if you're under, they said 30, they said, excuse me, if you're under 30 and you've been trying, you can't see a doctor until you've tried for two years. And then if you're from 30 to, I think 35, if you've been trying at least for one year, that's the only time you can go and see a doctor. And then if you're over 35 and you've been trying for six months, you can that like after six months you can down go and see a doctor so for us i was like uh so does it mean i have to wait for one year before i'm able to go and see a doctor i was like mm, i'm not sure so what i did was i decided to by by the by the time all this is going on now it's already january february march april i think it was around may uh, -uh i was like mm -mm, this is too much now so i decided to contact my OBGYN. I contacted her and I told her what was going on. So they scheduled us to come in and see my OBGYN. So that was already May, I believe. That was May. So I went in and I, you know, we saw her. She evaluated us and everything. She was like that for her. She don't see anything wrong. But I'm like, how can you say you don't see anything wrong? But what is going on? How come it's taking this? long you know for me to conceive so she was like if i'm so if i'm so impatient that she would direct us to there is a test she sent me to go do let me see if i can she sent me to go do this um, it's kind of a, a fertility evaluation for me i have to do um his his to hold on his thorough selfing go graphic jesus christ 
the name of this x-ray is just is an x-ray that is where they go in you know they check your fallopian tube your, they check um your uterus they check everything to make sure you know you're like nothing is preventing you from conceiving and also for my husband they decided to they sent him for i think semen evaluation too so by now it's already like five months we've been trying you guys so i went for the for the for the x-ray guys oh my gosh Ooh, that was an that was that was unbelievable that x-ray it was bad if you've gone if you i'm going to leave the name on the screen in case if you've done it you guys you know the pain it's like a very long needle the needle is probably this long guys and then you have to lay on your back and then they have to insert it inside of you until it gets to your uterus and it's just I don't even wish that on anybody. They say my 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 OBGYN told me well it's not painful or anything, but then you guys it was painful. For me, I was like, it's it's better for me to go do something on like just being home and and waiting. I was like, at least we're we're stepping in the right direction. So we went. Oh, and moreover, you guys, everything I'm using in today's um tutorial will be linked in my description box. And of course, you guys know the brushes I'm using. I literally just cleaned my brushes, so they are all clean, except the fact that I already used this one for my foundation, and I'm using this one now for my contour. All the brushes I use on my channel is from Beauty Crush Cosmetics. Everything will be linked in my description box if you guys want to check them out, because for me, they have the best brushes out there and very, very affordable. So we, we had the test. I think after a week, they sent the results to my OBGYN. So my OBGYN, I was just home one day, she called and she was like, um, she needs to see me. I was, I was kind of scared. And then I was like, okay, is my result out? She said, yes, that the result is out. So they booked us for an appointment. We went in and we saw her and then um, she explained everything. She said, my husband, perfectly fine. You know, he's good to go. She said, but for me, immediately she, immediately she said, but ha. I was like, what kind of story? I was like, what is all this, you know? As a Niger woman, I was already like, I started panicking my, in my heart. She said that the x-ray they did, that, um, yeah, they said that the right, my, my right, yeah, my right fallopian tube, something, it was, it's kind of blocked. There's even kind of a diagram for it. Like I know this is TMI you guys but thankfully you know every woman will have two fallopian tubes that some people actually have one problem with their fallopian tube and then they use one fallopian tube to have as much kids as, as they want. But I was like I now started being like I started getting worried. I'm like how can can I have a problem with my fallopian tube? Like I never had a problem with my fallopian tube before even you know before the twins and everything she was like she was now she was like who where did you have your c-section because the twins they came as um c-section i had them through c-section so the way she kept asking after who who did my my surgery for my c-section i knew probably that was where whatever went wrong went wrong it was during my c-section with the twins right but at least she was like that there is no need for an alarm at least the other the left fallopian tube is perfect there's nothing wrong with it so she now said that the best thing would be for her to transfer me to to transfer us to a specialist you know people who are into like reproductive um things you know she decided to send me because obgyns are they take care of pregnant women they don't do much when it comes to if you're having infertility issues so she decided to send us to this facility for specifically for if you're you know if you're having infertility issues so after she sent us in we called we make an arrangement we made an arrangement and the day came we went we it was a chinese doctor a, a male chinese doctor we went in we saw him I, we told him everything of course for, for my husband my husband was like as in even before we went in to go and see the specialist my husband was like if i can you just relax nothing is happening you know if you can only relax you will see that nothing is happening it's just that you're more you're very very tense and to be honest you guys that was getting very very impatient it was kind of a roller coaster you guys and that was actually that was when I really 
felt what women who are still believing God for the fruit of the womb. That was when I really like seriously understood what they go through. Because for me, I never had that issue. I never knew I would ever have that problem. You know, it was all rosy for me. The kids, like I said, under two months after marriage, after wedding, I, I got pregnant with the twins. So I never imagined that I would want to have another child and I would start having problem. After the specialist saw us, he was like, you know, everything is perfect with your husband, but with me, he had to start, you know, some evaluations and things like that. The first thing he said was that I was going to go on, um, was it Clo? Yeah, Clomid. Um, something called, there is this medication called Clomid. And it's meant to help with your ovarian function, you know, to, it's kind of a medicine you take. It helps with checking for your egg, you know, whether you, you're producing egg. And because of the fact that they had discovered that I had an, a problem with my right fallopian tube, the doctor was like that sometimes your left or your right fallopian tube, probably the one that has an issue is the one that has been releasing eggs all this while because you guys know like you know every um, ovulation a woman releases an egg so the doctor was like maybe it's been my right fallopian tube that's been releasing egg and because of the fact i have kind of a blockage in my right fallopian tube that that's probably why you know when the sperm gets there it gets blocked so it doesn't end up getting to the egg you know on the right so that was the main reason he explained that I had to go on the Clomid um, test. And this Clomid test, you guys, it's horrible. Like in terms of the processes, the procedures, I have you guys, um, how did, there is how you have to follow it. Where five days before your, your period, you go see them. They examine you and things like that. And then they give you the prescription. You have to go get the prescription you have to start taking it five days before your period and then your period the day your period starts you have to go to them early in the morning 7 a.m sometimes I, I used to leave my house like 6 a.m because the place is a little bit far and you guys know with the new york and new jersey traffic is crazy so i literally have to leave early to go you know for my seven for my 7 a.m appointments like it was just horrible you guys like i don't wish and after i went through this i was like gosh please bless every woman that that look that is asking you for the fruit of the womb like please god you know bless them because it's such a stressful journey and to think that you know some people go through it and still end up with nothing it's not it's not it's nothing i wish on anybody you guys so for the Clomid test, like I said, I have to go um, while the first day of my, of my period, I, I had to go, you know, they checked me out, they made sure where the egg was coming out from the left fallopian tube or whatever it is they did. And then the last day of my ovulation, or the last day of my period, you still have to go back and they have to do whatever it is they had to do. And then, of course, every woman, you have your period five days, and then you have your free period two to three days, and then from the fourth day, you're already fertile. So they tell you, it's kind of, they help you monitor when to start trying, you know? So we did that for that month. By the time all this is happening, you guys, is already, because with those people, by the time you book appointments, it, it takes them, I think, a month plus to even get, for you to even get to come in and see them so by the time this is happening it is already i think around july so for that month of july they tried the thing and i was so hopeful you guys so hopeful that at least you know it's not just us trying now at least we have a medication that i'm taking that you know that will help speed up the process and everything by that july i was i was already kind of getting relaxed i wasn't getting too worked up because of that i remember that day i was down here filming i believe it was a try on video i was filming for you guys and then um, i just started having cramps i went upstairs went to use the bathroom i found out that you know my period was it was my period you guys i found out that my period came even after the clomid um, um challenge and everything so i had to i called the specialist i told him that my period came so he was like okay that i have to come in um and see them that we have to come in and see and see him 
so we made another arrangement we went in and we saw him so he was like okay now is either we do another round of the clomid test right or he gave us an m2 options or we go for iui uh, or for ivf i was like which one is ivf my husband i think he was working that day so he didn't go for that appointment with me he said that the iui was around a couple of like I think he said um, $1,500 or around $2,000 which my my insurance covered and then he said IVF that sometimes he doesn't advise people to even go for the IUI because the IUI doesn't work but IVF even IVF self is 50-50 sometimes you see people that try IVF three four five six seven eight times and you know it's still not successful so he was like at least it's a step in the right direction we can try that you know we can either try IVF so I was like okay how much is the IVF he said IVF, IVF is around 18 or 20 thousand dollars and with that your insurance don't cover it so you literally have to come up with that when you need a child you can care less how much it's gonna cost you guys all you know is you need to you want to have a baby so after he said that he was like that he will send me downstairs to the to the person who will explain to me if I decide to go with IVF or IUI like the processes so I went downstairs I told him I said I'm going to get back to them since I wasn't there with my husband that I'm going to go get I'm going to talk to my husband and then get back to them on the option we decided to, we decide to go with so I went I went downstairs to go see the lady you guys <laughs> woman she started with one very long one like I'm, I'm i'm naturally a very very um scary person like i'm always scared when it comes to injection and things like that like i'm i'm a scary cat when it comes to injection and things like that so this woman started by showing me the the needle you know the syringe that i used to give myself injection for either the iui or, or the ivf that I literally have to give myself injection. He said she said something of I think she said every morning or every night for two weeks before I go to bed. I have to kind of fold my you know my abdomen. I have to fold it and then give myself an injection. As she was saying it, I was just there like this looking at her. She she was showing me the needle. She brought out the needle, she brought out the the medicine you know the liquid that i'm supposed to put inside the needle she was demonstrating on her tummy how i have to put the needle and give myself injection i was just like this you needed to see me that day you guys you will laugh i was just like this looking at like the woman was crazy she finished explaining all the all the processes and then she said after two weeks i have to come back they have to do this they have to do that in my mind i'm like all these things i have to go through i didn't even say nothing so after she finished, she said, any question? I didn't say, <laughs> I, didn't, I, I just said, oh, that I understood everything she said. So my dear, I told them, I said, I'm going to give them a call when I go home and discuss with my husband, you know, we'll be able to know which of the options they gave us the one to go for. So I left. I came back home. I talked, I explained everything that happened to my hobby. It'd be even before I finished talking about me giving myself the injection and everything my hubby just held me he said babe we already have two kids angel and Nikki, they are a blessing if we have to go through all this to have another kids like we didn't do nothing to have angel and Nikki. they just came on their own with the fallopian tube they said that it had uh, that has a blockage or whatever it is we don't even know if you were born with it. You don't know when it happened, but still you were able to carry twins. You had twins. Like, why are we stressing ourselves? Why don't, let's just relax. He said, babe, you're, we're not doing IUI. We're not doing IVF. Just forget it. Just leave it alone. Just, he said, just forget about having, in fact, we're not even having another child no more. I was just like this looking at him, you know, but of course I saw, I saw reasons with what he said what he was saying i saw a lot of reasons with him he just said just close that topic just leave it alone call them on monday tell them that we are in that we are interested in none of the options the doctor gave i was like are you sure even throughout that weekend i was still 
always come and ask him, babe, are you sure? Are you sure? And then, I think it was on a Sunday, I had to call my mother-in-law to gist her what, what is going on. My mother-in-law, she told me, she said she supports my husband, you know, that if my husband said that is it for us, we should just relax, leave it alone. If we still want to keep trying, but let it not be anything pressure, you know, don't put any expectations just try like you know that you're just trying don't put any stress on yourself so ugh, by monday i called the doctor and i told him that we're not interested in anyone of course as doctors you know he tried to talk me in i was like mm -mm. my husband said we're not that i should forget it so that was it yeah life went on after august september i was just here one day i was filming I was on camera just like the previous month I still I had the uh, you know I had this cramp like my period was starting so I went upstairs, upstairs of course I got myself ready I you know used my tampon or my pad whatever it was I used that day I came down I continued filming because I had checked and I saw that my period was there so I just took care of myself I came back and I continued filming stress-free nothing you know i was just relaxed i just started filming surprisingly i filmed really really late that day so by the time i was done filming it was probably around 12 pm or something so i went upstairs um got ready to take my bath but surprisingly when i you know when i pulled down i noticed barely anything on the on the pad i used i was like this is this is funny like this is crazy what is going on it was kind of a spotting i was like oh okay so i took my bed and i went to sleep so by the time i woke up the next day i checked myself nothing but meanwhile it was my period it was my period was due so i was like ha huh, this one is serious so so i waited that day nothing the following day nothing the third day i was like uh -uh, this is too much now so i had to go to cvs I went, I got a pregnancy um, stripe, I came home, I tried myself and it was positive you guys, I was so happy. My dad even visited then, I was so happy you guys, I told my husband, we told my dad, everybody we were all happy, of course, we were, you know, we just I started taking everything easy, that was September I think, I started taking everything easy, you know, everything was all good. And I called my my doctor. I called my OBGYN and I told her, "Look, this is I just found out I'm I'm pregnant." She was like, "Oh wow, the the specialist, you know." She was like trying. To, I said, "No, it's not the specialist. That we decided not to go forward with the specialist. We just relaxed and we, you know, we just started trying on our own. There was no assistant and every, or anything like that. So she was so happy." She scheduled, I think they are not supposed to see you until after your ninth week, but she said by the time I, I called that I was already more like six weeks gone, right? So I had like um, three more weeks to go see my OBGYN. So everything was all good, you know, everything. I started having my, uh, my pregnancy symptoms and everything. I was so happy. We were happy. We were, you know, we were all thanking the Lord. And then, and I was already nine weeks because I was supposed to see her on Monday. And then on Sunday before the Monday, I was supposed to see my OBGYN. I was sleeping that Sunday morning and then I felt like I wanted to go pee. So I woke up, went to the bathroom to pee. And surprisingly when I... When I was going to the bathroom, I kind of felt kind of like my body was slippery, which is not normal, you know, if you're pregnant. I was like, what's going on? So I went to the bathroom, squatted down to pee, like I sat down to pee. And while I was peeing, I just noticed something like, like lump of blood drop, you know, in the bathroom. I was like, what's going on? I now checked myself, I cleaned myself up and I found out I was bleeding. So I got worried. I ran to the to the to the bedroom. I woke my husband up. I was like, babe, I don't know what's going on. I was literally like in tears by now. I was like, I don't know what's going on. Something is wrong. And I think that Monday was a public holiday because I remember we had called my OBGYN and their ans their answering machine answered our call. 
and they said that my OBGYN was wasn't working. Who was I? I think it was on a Tuesday I had the OBGYN appointment because Monday was public holiday. So, um, long story short, I told the answering machine, you know, the woman that had I had talked to what was going on. She was like, "That we should monitor it. If it persists after like 10 a.m., we should start going to the emergency room." You guys, that 10 a.m. was that was the longest wait of my life because I kept going to the bathroom like every minute to go check myself and something that was kind of spot more like spotting and now started being a real like bleeding I saw that I was bleeding so I told my my husband was like no babe we can't wait let's just go to the emergency room so I went to the emergency room they started with their drip and you know their IV and things like that they just immediately started taking care of me and while this was happening you guys i was almost like losing it i was losing my breath i couldn't i couldn't function nothing i was in pain so the doctor checked me and they said oh yeah that you know they did an x-ray they sent me immediately for an x-ray they did everything at the emergency room and they discovered i was miscarrying the baby you guys oh my gosh <laughs> so the doctor was like that they have to monitor me for that day and then the next day I have to go see my OBGYN. <sighs> you guys, after I stayed at the, at the emergency room almost the whole day, I came back, uh, they discharged me. I came back to the house. It was, I couldn't even talk to nobody, you guys. I went straight to our room. I was crying, I was weeping. My husband, he kept consoling me, my dad. You know, my dad, they were, they, you know, they tried to make me see that everything is going to be alright, but I wasn't seeing nothing. I wasn't seeing anything. I even had to go, come here on, on YouTube to check on videos. People that have gone through that. And, you know, I by the time it was already kind of night, I started, like, consoling myself because some people that have gone through miscarriages, they ended up having healthy, beautiful babies. There's even this woman, I watched her video, she had... Um, a miscarriage I think her 13th week or something you know she was devastated but then at the end of the day she has like three kids now after the miscarriage so I just started you know consoling myself I was like it was after the miscarriage I was like like I'm done seriously I'm not gonna worry myself if it happens let it happen but I'm not gonna worry myself anymore concerning a child you know having a baby and things like that so I just decided to rest my case and that was it we you know I went through it thank God that I do what I love so I think the next day or something I went back to filming I was happy you know naturally I'm a very bubbly job jolly person you know so I went back to doing what I love which is creating content the funny thing is when you know we go through a lot uh, we're all human right when you see social media content creators, it's always, I don't know, some people always feel like, oh, we are, we're not superhuman, you guys, we go through things too. Even though we are, sometimes you, we might not be open to share it with, you know, our audience or share it with the rest of the world, but just like everybody, we all go through things. And I've had this thing where, with my acne, you guys, I seriously want to go on Accutane. But because for over a year plus now, we've been trying and they said, my dermatologist said that we can go, I can go on Accutane. Especially when you're trying, you can't go on Accutane. You want to be very, very careful because Accutane can cause damages to a baby. So, literally, I have to kind of keep my life on hold just going through you know this going through the fertility issue so i have a cousin in canada my beautiful cousin you guys if you follow me on instagram you know that last year we didn't do christmas alone my cousin was with us she came with her daughter you know to do to celebrate christmas with us so Funny thing is, while I was going, when while we were going through our fertility thing, that she already has a baby. She has a baby girl, and they've they've been trying too, and she's been having you know difficulty just like myself. And surprisingly, was it May last year? Around June or 
June, May, I think May or June, she called me and she told me that they are expecting you guys. I was so happy for her. Surprisingly, I think a month or two after, I was just sleeping one day, she called me and she told me the worst news ever. That was before my miscarriage. That was, I think, two months before my, mis my own miscarriage, you guys. She had called me and she told me that she had miscarried. Worst news ever. Like, that was the worst news for me, you guys. I was so, I was devastated. I was already, like, happy for her that they are expecting until she called me and told me that she had a miscarriage. It was so devastating, you guys. So, I'm very, we're very, very close. So, it's been more like living, like, when you, like, her story is similar to my story, you know? It's very, very similar. It's like, you watch somebody, something happens to somebody, and then you don't even know yours is on the way. Thankfully, by October or something, last year, she called me. She was so happy and she shared the news that she's expecting again. So, you know, it was around November or something. I'm, I was so happy for her. But before then, she already told me that she would like to celebrate because they live in Canada. So she had told me that she would like to celebrate um, Christmas with us in the U.S. So I was so happy. I told her, of course, you know, we got ready. We got ready for her and the baby. They came. It was so fun. But she was like, you know, freshly pregnant. Remember we had the miscarriage, like she had miscar a miscarriage a month or two before me and I was still, you know, believing God, I was still, you know, hoping but I wasn't stressed about it no more. So she came, she was going through her morning sickness and everything. I was so very, very supportive, you know, anything she was craving for, I made sure I, I provided it for her. They stayed for, I think, a week or two for Christmas and she went back. So after she left, because she was going to be, um, you know, entering the new year with her full family, her husband, herself, and her, you know, her daughter, they had to leave early. And after she left, you guys, I became so sick. Like, I became severely sick. December is always allergy period, so I thought maybe, you know, it's allergy. So I was just like, oh, it's going to go away. I and my cousin, we thought maybe I was missing her or something like that, you know. But as time went on, you guys, it wasn't getting any better. Like, I wasn't getting any better at all. It started giving my husband concern. So he was like, babe, you have to get to the hospital to find out what's going on. So that day, I think it was on a Wednesday, we took the kids to school and then we decided to drive to the hospital to find out what was going on. And um, when I came in, I told the doctor, you know, my symptoms and how I was feeling. So I was like, that I think it's probably allergy. So the doctor was like, oh, you know, the questions they asked, uh, you, they asked, you know, when you go to the hospital, the doctor was like, oh, okay that they were going to run a test. They asked me a few questions. Of course, their normal question, when was the first day of your last period? And all those questions, they, they always ask women. So they decided to take my blood. So after the result of the test came back, the doctor just came into my room and he was like, oh, congratulations. You guys are pregnant. And when that happened, I wasn't even, like, we were trying, but I wasn't in any way. I wasn't stressed. I was relaxed, you know. And it just happened, you guys. I thought it was a joke. It all happened when I wasn't thinking about it. It was as if God just said, stress about it, do your thing. When it's my time, I will do it. And this is one of the reasons I went MIA on YouTube, you guys, earlier this year. Apart from, of course, losing my mother-in-law.
this is one of the reasons I went Emma here guys like I'm coming out clean now because this is something I've been holding in for such a long time of course a lot of you guys guessed so some people are like when I post videos some people will be like oh my girl it's like there is there is a what do, cake in the oven or something like that some people guessed but of course I had to take my time I had to take it easy you know I didn't want to do much I didn't want to stress myself because of the past experience I was so scared the first trimester was so scary i couldn't do much like i just wanted to make sure whatever happened with the previous miscarriage wasn't my fault so i had to literally take a break apart from us dealing with my mother-in-law i had to you know also take a break and i'm so happy that we were able to share the news with her before she passed on so you guys i'm coming out clean right now <laughs> I've been holding it I couldn't tell you guys because I wanted to make sure everything will go well and thankfully we are already almost to our third trimester you guys so everything has been good it's not been a stressful pregnancy they always say be happy for people when good things happen to them because you never know just maybe your own blessing is on the way it just happened without stress without no v ivf without iui without nothing god just decided to let me stress over everything he just decided he's like okay just stress over it do your own thing when it's my own turn i will do my own thing like they always say there's always light at the end of the tunnel yeah i decided to come out clean in this video i just thought of the right day or the right time to share this amazing news with you guys and to me, I feel like there is no day so special than a Mother's Day, than Mother's Day. So, I decided to come out clean, you guys. No more hiding. Some of you have been guessing, like, oh, mother, what's up? What's going on? Is there, uh, is it cake in the oven or bread in the oven? Like, a lot of people have been asking me questions. People have been saying, oh, my bell, you're getting too light. Stop bleaching, guys. I'm not bleaching. All these things is pregnancy hormone, pregnancy changes even um my green veins me talking and you know sometimes i feel like i need to catch my breath i've been you know this pregnancy hasn't it hasn't been bad you guys the twins they like they showed me pepper the twins pregnancy wasn't easy at all i decided to just be free at least i can now be free to post my pregnancy content videos and you know post pictures i'm so so thankful i'm so grateful to god I never knew a day like this would come after I've stressed myself after I went through everything God was just relaxed looking at me watching me he just said let me just allow you it was as if God just said let me allow you do your own thing just go ahead do stress about it do your own thing when 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 I'm about like when it's time I'm gonna do my own thing you know it was as if that was just what God was had in mind all the time that I was I was stressing, I was running from one OBGYN to ultrasound to specialist to this to that. And even with one fallopian tube being blocked, God still made a way, you guys. I'm pregnant. Like I don't even want to cry because I just did this makeup and I have my maternity photo shoot after later on this afternoon. So I've been trying to hold down tears throughout the time I was filming this video but yeah you guys please I just want to encourage whoever this video is for whoever is going through this I know how difficult you guys like if you've ever wanted a child and you got it straight on without no stress without going to see this doctor that doctor you don't even know what God has done for you like honestly when I had the twin when I got pregnant with the twins it was two months after I I joined my husband so I didn't even like I wasn't no stress I didn't even like when I hear about people going through like infertility and things like that of course or as a woman you want to be in their shoes you want to understand but you can never understand it until you, you walk through that until you walk with that shoe you know on through until you walk through that tunnel that is when you understand so many like 
negative pregnancy test you feel like you're pregnant you know you're pregnant within you and then you take a pregnancy test is negative this is not something i wish on any woman you guys but i know a lot of women are going through this and i just want to send a word of encouragement to you listen listen you're gonna carry your child just keep the faith Keep the faith going. You're going to testify one day, just like I'm sitting down here now testifying to you guys. You're going to testify one day. Just keep that faith going. Don't lose hope. God is still under control. He's still God. He's still God, you guys. Just keep that faith going, honestly. And yeah, you guys, I think this is it. This is... <sighs> this is our miracle baby. Let me just put it this way. This is our miracle baby. I told my cousin, I said, you. it's like you came into my house and you brought this miracle because it happened after she left. And I'm so, 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 so grateful to God. We are so happy. The twins are so happy. Mm -mm. It's not a little secret, you guys. I wanted to share this secret with you guys. And I hope you all enjoyed this video. And please don't forget to hit that like button below and also hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. And of course, expect a lot of content from me because I'm free now. I can share whatever it is I want to share. <laughs> yeah, guys. And till my next video, I will see you all very, very soon. Bye.